life. You need a turning point in your life. You've been walking the journey. You need a turning point in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise be to God. And this turning point series is going to be in three, in three, in three uh, categories. And I'm going to be talking this morning about three different unique people today in the name of Jesus Christ. Many of you know their story. You know the story of a blind Bartimaeus. You know the story of the woman with the issue of blood. And you know the story of Jairus. Hallelujah, Lord. Blind Bartimaeus was blinded, you know, for 38 years. You know, Jairus' daughter was sick and she's about to die. And you know the story of the woman with the issue of blood that has issues, situation, health issue, and she suffered for over 12 years. And no matter how she tried, she wasn't getting better. How many of you know that sickness can deprive you of anything? You can't even enjoy anything. Sickness, one sickness, just acid reflux, a little bit acid reflux, can just make sure you can't even enjoy simple pizza. And that's not of God. The Bible says every good and every perfect gift is from above. It's from the Father of light, in which whom there is no variable, neither any shadow of turning. Blood, losing blood is losing life. Blood is more like life. And if you're losing blood for over 12 years, there has to be a way that you can replenish that blood. And for 12 years, this woman was losing blood. Losing consistent blood. But she was there for 12 years. 12 years. And 12 years, she tried everything she could, but she didn't get better. But well, that's not what I'm talking about today. Today I wanted to talk about, you know, one man called Blind Bartimaeus. And we're going to look in the book of uh, Mark chapter 10. Praise be to God. Mark 10, we read from, from verse 46. Praise be to God. Daniel, Mark chapter 10. Thank you, Lord. By the way, can you help me give my son Daniel a big clap offering this morning? You know, I always wanted to let him know. You know, it's never easy in a time like this. You know, and many of you know when it's, uh, people go out there and say, uh, the son of a preacher, things and all that, you hear all those kind of things, you know, and it's not easy, you know, in a time like this to see your seed coming, you know, and also adults, praise be to God. I'm not taking anything away from them, but at this age, from we look back from when we started how many years ago, and from whatever age, you know, he has never, in which one way or the other, stopped seeking after God. One least wanted to inquire. Hallelujah, Lord. And I'm not saying this to make him or make him feel like he's above somebody else, but I'm just saying that train up a child in the way he or she should go. So when they grow up, they will not depart from me in Jesus' name. For over two weeks, I took his phone. You know, today, no phone. Two weeks or so. How long? Is it almost two weeks? Took his phone, no phone. You know, and still he was obedient. Not, in, you know, in all kinds of things and all that. Because when you see things that is not appropriate, you don't wait. You don't wait. You don't wait. You don't wait. This is why God put you as a caretaker. You know, some of you looking at me, young children, I'm here, you're looking and say, ah, two weeks, two days, in two, two seconds, even too much. What's going on with this father this morning? I don't want to hear what I'm hearing this morning. You know, no, you've got to do what you got to do. It is my job. I'm the caretaker here. Praise be to God. It is my job to put my foot down in Jesus' name. And I'm grateful to God with my wife, our first lady, that the same thing we enforce the same rule. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. You are going to be grounded. Praise be to God. And not just grounding you because we feel like wanting to flex our muscle, but there's consequence. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Praise be to God. When a soul that sinners shall surely die. And if you break rules, even in the system that we live in, there's a penalty to be paid. Am I making sense in the rain? If you walk at bell that you walk at, if you don't follow certain protocol, no matter how long you've been walking, there's a penalty to be paid. Am I making sense this morning? So we must apply the same thing, you know, even in our home as a believer. If you see that your son or your daughter is deviating and moving away and drifting gradually, you don't say, I can't be sure. Uh, you, know, you need to put your foot down, bring out the armor, bring out all the big guns. I'm not talking about physical guns. I'm talking about going on the knee, praying in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, Lord. you got to believe God that this son, this daughter of yours, will get to the other side in Jesus' mighty name. You have to believe in the name of Jesus Christ because the enemy has come but to steal, to kill, and to destroy because it's okay with me it doesn't mean that they know. God is going to ask me, what did you do? with the sin. God is going to inquire of me in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's why I'm being truthful to you. You need to stand on the word of God. The days are evil. Redeem the time in Jesus' mind. You see how things are going. It's not going the way it is. You don't need to sugarcoat stuff and say you don't want. you got to put your foot down in Jesus because after a while you can get out of your hand. And I'm trusting God every day. You can see that he's taller than me. 
Even though at times they try to want it to make me feel good, they bend a little bit. I start, you know, I, I, I admit you're the tallest in the house. That's okay. For a long time I've had the badge. And yeah, you know, I know that. I know Mr. Ray, you know what I'm saying. But you get to a point, you just didn't see, you know, <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't see anything coming, just all of a sudden, you know. And so, oh God, and all of that, it looks like your boy right in the middle of your head. And you say, oh, you know, and all that. You can see through. And the same thing, because they're taller, doesn't mean that you need to stop being their parent. You need to parent with the love, and you, don't, you also need to do whatever you can to prevent them from falling. Praise be to God. Hallelujah, Lord. And for what, almost two weeks, his phone, you know, and all that. The first day was hard, second day it was like, but you need to explain. Because before we do that, we explain the rules, things that you shouldn't do. But of course, get to a point, you're not looking. There's always something wanted to get you to wanted to say, who are they to tell me something? Maybe you keep saying it, you know, it's okay. And for quite some time, just like Goliath, been defiling the children of Israel, bragging over and over. And every time, and God has to use the little David to remind Goliath that no, 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 you cannot defy the people of God like that in Jesus' name. And you follow what I'm saying? So we put our foot down. In Jesus' mighty name. People say, oh, you still have one. You are not doing something that is out of hand. You bless them with it. But they have to use the tool in the decent, in the proper way. They say, the Bible says in the book, book of Ecclesiastes, it says there's a time and a season to everything. Praise be to God. When the child needs to go to bed, they got to go to bed. They can say, okay, no, no, they got to go to bed. Hallelujah, Lord. So you can wake up when you need to wake up so you can be productive. Hallelujah. The minister Ray, you work so hard. But you, well, you don't play with your bedtime. You gotta go to bed, but you gotta go to bed. Praise be to God. And you so you can wake up so you can feel fresh. You don't want to play so much game and when you need to wake up and go to school and you get there late and you say they need to understand. Nobody understands for you. Making excuses is not gonna get you to the promised land. And you follow what I'm saying? You need to prepare yourself in the season and out of season. You need to understand, for the enemy has come, but to steal and to kill and to destroy. My Bible says my people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. They need to have knowledge in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. And the knowledge is making sure you know what the word of God said. It is written. It is written in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise be to God. And it's turning point. And I'm trying to still get to my message. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 10. Are we there? From, from verse 46. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want us to read together. And they came to Jericho, and he went out of Jericho with the disciples. And great number of people, blind by Timio, the son of Timio, sat by the highway side begging. And when he had Jesus of Nazareth, when he did what? When he had that it was Jesus of Nazareth, this is very important, why I always pause to remind you, when he heard that he was, that is, there must have been other counterfeit that have already showed up. People must have been parading themselves and all that kind of thing. But they have the form of godliness, but they deny power thereof. Are you following what I'm saying? There have always been people who claim they have what it takes, they are Messiah, they did, they that, but they're not. You need to know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And here, when he heard that it was Jesus Christ of Nazareth, hallelujah, Lord, he began to do what? He began to do what? This is the problem with we believers, we don't cry. This is the problem of believers today, we don't cry. We know the situation, it is not. We are in a situation that is unhealthy for us, but we don't cry. We just try to, you know, want to dance around the table. You got to cry out about this situation. Are you following what I'm saying? He cried out what? Jesus, thou son of David, have what? Have what? And many child here. That he should what? Hold his what? His peace. That he should hold his peace. But what did he do? He cried out in the more great deal. That what? I can't that see. That son of David, that have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Hallelujah, Lord. God Almighty is noticing you. Call upon him. This is the scripture. Call upon him. And he will what? Answer you. Call upon him 
and he will what? Answer you. That's what Jeremiah 33 said. Call upon me and I will answer you. It doesn't matter how big your situation is. It doesn't matter what the you know, circumstances you're in. Call upon the Lord and he will answer you. And guess what? Praise be to God. Where are we? And Jesus stood still. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Listen, look at the tone. Be of good comfort. You sure? Behave. You follow what I'm saying? Behave yourself. Be of what? Good comfort. You can even imagine the attitude, but the man they're doing that to cannot see. See what I mean? He can see whichever way, whichever attitude, whichever. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care about that. A man who was bold enough to call upon Jesus don't care what anybody think or feel about him. Praise be to God. Hallelujah, Lord. And what did Jesus say? What did Jesus do? And and he rise and he call it thee. He said, and rise and he call it thee. And he cast the garment and rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Hallelujah, Lord. What without that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I may receive my what? That I may receive what? I may receive some money, compensation, lost wages. Oh no, I bent my evil. I bent my loved ones. You know, my family were not good. Did he go into all that? What did he say? You come to God, you must be specific. Whenever you come to God, you need to be specific. You cannot come to him just because, you know, you have, you know, there are a lot of times that we come with asking for stuff that are not relevant. You gotta be specific. When you're asking God, you gotta be specific. Praise be to God. You must have received a bad doctor's report. That's one of the things I wrote down here this morning. Maybe somebody here today, maybe you received a bad a doctor's report, or you have just been told your spouse don't want to have any relationship with you anymore. That say, oh, this is it. We got to act our way. Or your lawyer just told you that you know everything you've been working for, planning for, is gone. Your money, everything is all gone. Are you following what I'm saying? Here, I don't know what crisis that you are in today, my friends. I don't know what situation that you are in, but like blind Bartimaeus, he was blinded. He was in crisis, not for one day, not for two days, but for years. But he heard about Jesus Christ. And you are in crisis too. I'm in crisis. And we are hearing about Jesus Christ. What are we doing, ladies and gentlemen? Are we calling upon him or are we just trying to figure out things? Are you hearing what I'm saying? This man was in crisis. We are in a society that we're in crisis that there's coronavirus everywhere and all of a sudden people are contemplating should their children go back to school? Should this happen? Should that happen? What do we do? Confusion all over the place. And yet we have Jesus Christ. The Bible said the weapon of our warfare, they are not kind, but they are strong through Christ to the pulling down of strongholds. And yet people are debating on all those things rather than calling upon upon the name of the Lord. And I'm reminding you here that it's not how long you've been in this situation. Blind Bartimaeus did not know about Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ showed up just in time for him. He would have missed this moment, but he did not let anything that people said keep him down. He opened his mouth. The more they tell him to be quiet, to hold his peace, he never stopped. The more you yell louder, the more you cry louder, the more you seek God more, the more you call upon the name of the Lord. This is what we need to do, ladies and gentlemen. Don't let nobody tell you to be quiet. Don't let nobody, don't let no spouse, don't let no children tell you not to cry out to God. You need to cry out to God because they who must worship God must worship Him in his spirit and in truth. Jesus Christ is passing. Don't let your opportunity pass you by in the name of Jesus Christ. This is your turning point. This is the turning point to be waiting for. Come upon Him in Jesus' mind. This is a situation that I feel so it bothers me at times. We go to church, it's not how long or what time you spend. It's not about repeating stuff all over and over. But you gotta let faith rise up from the within you.
from without faith, it is impossible to please God. Just imagine something must have lifted up from the inside of blind Bartimaeus to call upon Jesus Christ. Something must have you know, provoked. Something, something that could get provoked on inside of him to call upon Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, thou son of David, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I'm tired. I am tired of my situation, of this crisis. He's been going on for far too long. I've been mocked. I've been looked at. I've been, you know, people have speak for me and all that. But I don't care right now. All I care when Jesus said, what would you want me to do? That I may receive my sight. That I may receive my sight. That my son may lay. That my daughter may lay. That my children will grow and become what God want them to become in Jesus' name. That my marriage will be you know, refortified again in Jesus' mighty name. It's not over for me, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Remember King David said in Psalm chapter 3. Many a day who say of my soul, there is no help for me in God. But oh Lord, you are the shield for me. You are the glory and you are the lifter of my head. In Jesus' name. We are in crisis. Crisis is everywhere. There's situation. There's circumstances all over the place. But the word of God reminds us that you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. You have been called out of darkness to, into God's marvelous light. Come and show forth your praise before God. In Jesus' mighty name. God has delivered you. God has redeemed you. Not of corruptible sin, but of an incorruptible sin. Let the redeem of the Lord God says so in Jesus' name. We have been redeemed and we're going to be grateful and show for our gratitude to God in Jesus' mighty name. I was blind, but now I see. What do you see? Do you see the goodness of God? Do you see the faithfulness of God? Do you see the mercy of God? Do you see the love of God? What do you see, my friends? Your eyes have been blind before now that your eyes can see. What are you seeing? Your ears can hear, now you hear. What are you hearing? Romans 10, 17. It said, now faith coming by hearing and hearing by the, by the word of God. What are you hearing? What are you spending time to hear? The things you spend time to hear, blame my time you spend time in hearing about Jesus Christ. So when he heard about Jesus, ah, he won't miss his moment. Hallelujah, Lord. And he heard about Jesus, he didn't take that for granted. But if he had been hearing so many other things, he would have missed his turning point. But he'd been hearing, tell me more about Jesus. Tell me more about Jesus. Yes, I'm blind. Even though I'm a be by the gate, I'm a be by the temple gate. I ask them, what are they saying? They're talking about one man called Jesus. I heard that he raised the dead. I heard that he, he, he healed a 12-year-old dog. I hear that he raised a 12-year-old dead girl. I hear so many good things. I hear that how the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. Our God has anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost with power. Who went about doing good, healing all that was prayer. Oh, I'm not going to miss that moment in Jesus' mighty name. I'm sure that he positioned himself. He probably inquired in story, where is Jesus going to be passing by today? Anyhow, looking for someone to drag him to that corner where Jesus will be passing by. He must have put his head down so carefully to be hearing. Behold, he's coming. We hear, we hear, I hear footsteps. I hear many footsteps. He must be this Jesus. 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 He is Jesus. He is Jesus. He is Jesus. Jesus, the Son of David. Have mercy on me. Have mercy. And they say, oh, we have good cheer. He called me. We have good cheer. Who cares about that? I'm grateful that he called me. I'm thankful he calls me. I'm thankful that he decided to stop. He will be, I know he's a very busy man, but he still decided to stop for me. Me, the wretched man. He decided to stop for me. Nobody want to have anything to do with me. He decided to stop for me. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it in Jesus' mighty name. Don't take for granted what you've been hearing. 
Don't take for granted your faith in the Lord your God. Do not take all these things for granted because earthly things we always let you down. Everything you have, everything that you thought you have acquired, like I told you about song, you know, it is a duty as much as we can afford different phone and all that, but it is also a duty to make sure that they're within the guidelines and all that. I was a privilege to attend one of the seminars at the school where they're talking about, um, you know, how we need to monitor, you know, how our children, they are very, very clever. Very clever. How many of you know, you know, even to a three-year-old or so, you give a phone to. They know even every software in that phone. And there are many of us, like full-grown men like me, I still struggle even to, you know, uh, to you know, share a message. It's still a problem at times. Are you following what I'm saying? But they know so many stuff. And they can do so many stuff with that device, with that phone. And recently, I also found out, oh, you know, and that he was, you know, uh, playing game. And... I know that when people are playing games, they sometimes can play with multiple people. But the rule is that you do things and you do it with it, what we say. But so, you know, he just been, you know, I just discipline concerning phone. This is one thing I want you to take note of. Just discipline concerning phone. And he said, now that's okay, I wanted to do something on it, on my computer, on my laptop. Yeah, it's okay, son. You can do something on computer. It's all right. You can be too. And the boy stepped again into another level. Praise be to God, to another level. He decided to invite all his friends. All his friends said, play the game. I just see that something, he's just talking. And I said, huh? what am I here? Oh, I'm just, you know. And so I said, okay, can you, I need a help. Can you pause this thing? And, um, live long, oh my dad, it's not possible. I can't do it right here, I'm in a zone. You see what I mean? I'm in a different level. I can't pause this game right now. I, what do you mean pause? I have to stop the computer. I mean, you know. I said, huh? I just told you, just then, you know, explained to me. The reason why, because I was about you. You know, I said, Dad, don't worry, I don't understand. You know, the re I actually was playing with a couple of my friends. See what I mean? A couple of, a couple of my friends were just talking. Who had this friend? But I told you, let me know who. <laughs> you know, and all that. You know, I, I understand. I, you know, and all that. You know. But what I'm trying to say here is that you got to put your foot down and understand what the Word of God says. And to every parent in this place, to every family in relationship, you need to have a boundary. You need to understand. For God so loved the world that He gave. Because He did, it doesn't mean we should take what He has done for us for granted. People like of old, like Blanc Bartimaeus, do not have the privilege of what we have. And yet they seek in the face of God. You have sickness in those days. It definitely is as a result of sin. Are you following what I'm saying? Rebellion does not flow in those days. And you will see when in certain part of the world today, when you disobey the authority, there's certain amount of lashing that you're going to get publicly, including men and women. You're going to get it big time and they will call people to witness you getting that lashing. So we, if they can do that and people are withdrawing from there, we cannot take because what we have is bigger. We have the name, we have the name of Jesus Christ. Praise be to God, it is bigger. And we must try as much as possible to discipline ourselves. It is good to do all those things, but we must not forget who we are because sooner or later the enemy will find a way. When the edge crack, the enemy will come in and the serpent will come in and will bite. We will seal every edges. We will seal everything in Jesus' mighty name. I'm being honest with you this morning, my friend. I'm being honest with you. We must seal every edge in Jesus' mighty name. It is time you are as a parent, get sure that we're praying more and more in the name of Jesus Christ. They have devotion. Every time we're checking, sometimes, you know, my wife busted him, not to, Danny, I'm sorry, we're coming to you too much today. My wife busted him a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, and said, oh, tell me about the devotion. We have devotion. What did you start? Oh, I started. He had a particular scripture in his head. We call it. The same time, it's like you're repeating the same, you know, and my wife, you know, always paying attention to numbers and things like that. Say, you said that they say, oh, uh, I mean, oh, I mean. So tell us more about You can see the story is always around that area. So did you actually, actually know? You know, and all that. But you must, you know, do this so it will be well with you in Jesus' mighty name. Praise be to God. It doesn't mean because he didn't do it. I've been done. And I told you, I know what it's like to be a 13-year-old. I wasn't perfect. 
that I go. Not to you have going today that you have parents who hear the word of God with you. You know that we have that privilege that we put the word of God before us every now and then and making sure that, you know, we have parents that, you know, uh, they're doing their own thing. I share with you those days in Nigeria and all that, you know, when you celebrate your birthday, you know, it's actually your parents celebrate it. You know, it's your birthday, but they're bringing their friends. You see what I mean? Nobody even cares. They would just say, oh, baby the boy, that's okay. How are you? Go sit down. You know, it's your birthday. Nobody cares about you. They just say, oh, is that the birthday? <laughs> and your parents are sitting down enjoying themselves. It's supposed to be your day. But nobody cares about how it was. They're just having a good time. You follow what I'm saying? But we are trying to make sure that they're enjoying that. Amen? And that's why what we didn't have, I'm trying to give them and give them the name of Jesus Christ, teaching them the love of God, because this is going to, you know, guide them, you know, give them Jesus Christ, please, give them Jesus Christ, amen, and that's what Blind Bartimaeus saw this, you know, and called upon that name, he has called on everything, everything failed, but he called on the name of Jesus Christ, and he was redeemed in Jesus' mighty name, amen. I'm just introducing this message this morning because I couldn't get into many things because I always wanted to be mindful of time as we've always been wanted to do here. So I'm going to stop this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, but next week we might go into that more or we'll go to the next segment of Jairus or uh, the woman with the issue of love. So I bless God for those who are watching and have the opportunity to listen to us. May God bless you with me. Please make sure that you train up your child in the way he or she should go. Don't take for granted what God has blessed you with. Please, in the name of Jesus, redeem the time. The days are evil. The Lord God bless you and keep you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.